Thank you, Jane. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining our Invest today. My name is Paco Ibarra, and I am responsible for the institutional businesses at Citi. I have been in this job since mid-2019, and before that, I ran our markets and securities services business. I joined Citi over 30 years ago in Spain, and I have had a career that has moved me around the world with roles in Mexico, Singapore, New York, and London. Having now run ICG for some time, I've gained a good perspective on the strength and potential of our business, and I hope to be able to convey that to you during this presentation. We will start by describing our franchise today, the clients we do business with, and our recent financial performance. Then with the help of my colleagues, we will discuss the future of the business and how we will create value for our shareholders. Along the way, I hope we will also be able to show how City has transformed into a more focused institution that puts the client at the center of everything that it does. And how we have also connected the businesses in ICG to each other and to our personal banking and wealth management activities. Let me go directly to our first slide, which is a snapshot of our business. You have heard from Jane that our vision for City is to be the preeminent bank for institutional clients that operate globally and have cross-border needs. Why is this relevant? And why is this different for Citi versus other global or regional banks? First, you see that we offer a complete set of products and services. This is the result of a deliberate strategy not to exit products or services that met core financial needs of our clients. We offer those products in the broadest set of countries with a long-term physical presence and the local knowledge that comes with it in 95 of them. Finally, we offer those products and services in an integrated way as a single institution, treating the client as one global relationship. This is the result of having learned to operate that way in many countries over many years, and it is a differentiated offering. So why is this so important? It's important because what we offer is precisely what our clients are increasingly demanding. Two very significant things are happening simultaneously. First, large clients are becoming more global and mid-sized clients are also becoming global in their aspiration sooner, including very importantly, new economic digital clients who are also scaling up much faster. Second, the world's financial infrastructure is modernizing, but not converging, making the financial management of a global business increasingly difficult. So as our clients expand geographically, the complexity of their financial life grows exponentially with the additional locations, products, and services they require. And that's where we come in for our clients. Our integrated global network and complete set of products and services simplifies operating a business globally. The integration, depth, and breadth of our offering creates value for clients. This is not easily replicable, and we see our role growing in importance rather than diminishing. Is what has given serious institutional business such a strong competitive position, producing solid returns. And we believe we have significant potential for further progress. Let me try to elaborate on some of the things that I just stated. We offer a complete set of products and services that cover the core financial needs of our clients. We do this across three different areas. In our services businesses, facilitate our clients daily financial lives. We help them pay and collect funds and optimally manage their liquidity. We help them hold, move, and finance securities. In markets, we provide clients with access to the world's public and private capital, money, and risk markets. We enable them to invest, finance assets, and manage risk in pools of liquidity across the globe. And in banking, we address the needs associated with the biggest moments in our clients' lives when they go public or rethink their long-term funding strategy, or when they have to merge or acquire a business, restructure or sell part of the business, we are there to make it possible. These areas address all the key financial needs of our clients, and we have a strength in all of them. By having a strength individually is not enough. As I mentioned, we offer those products and services in an integrated way, and this reduces complexity for our clients. That integration occurs on three dimensions. First, 
through our corporate and commercial bankers and our investor relationship managers, we provide holistic, coordinated coverage to our clients across everything that we do for them. Second, as you see on the left part of the slide, the majority of our clients do business with us across everything that we offer. A strength in a particular area can be leveraged by us and by our clients to engage in other areas, creating a broader relationship. It is a natural synergy. And third, our products reinforce each other by being manufactured together. We have described those connections on the right side of the slide. They interconnect every one of our platforms to every other. Let me touch on some examples of that. We have very particular strength in cross-border payments and in foreign exchange. That is not a coincidence. Those strengths reinforce each other with our corporate payments business benefiting from the extraordinary liquidity in our FX business and vice versa. It's the same with our banking and markets franchises. Our bankers have built a leading capital markets business in part because our markets business ability to efficiently distribute client securities to investors. And markets sees greater investor interest because of its role as a distributor of primary flow created by banking. That is strength in banking serves us as an entry point for services. And conversely, TTS serves sometimes as an entry point for banking. So it's not just that the clients buy our products and services together. It is that they are naturally connected and naturally reinforcing as you run them together. We just said that our clients are becoming increasingly global. How does, how does our network create value for them? The graph on the left shows the distribution of our clients' revenue as a function of the number of countries and products in which they engage with us. As you can see, the business that we do with companies that use us intensely across the network is a very large part of our business and also the most profitable. The breadth of our network sets us apart. As you heard from Jane, 85% of our revenue is made with companies that have subsidiaries outside of the 60 largest countries. Our clients do business in countries where we often are the only global bank offering services. This is important, but not just because the revenues we make in those countries are particularly large, but because we're uniquely capable of offering coverage to them in those countries. Many times, they will see that as a key reason to choose us, not just for business in those countries, but for business across the entire network. This is a very powerful model for us. It gives us a differentiated offering. Our expertise in bringing our clients to these markets without taking disproportionately local credit risk is one of the reasons why our risk performance in emerging markets has been very strong in spite of our presence in them. So the network is critical. It is what drives profitability in our business, what makes our clients approach us. And how does that network operate? How is it evolving? And is it a lasting advantage? Our global network is not some static or fading historical thing. It's constantly morphing and evolving as we invest and respond to clients' needs. The network was originally developed as a way to facilitate the expansion of multinationals that originated in developed markets and moved into other developed markets or into emerging markets. It had a west, east, and a north, south direction. Sometime in the 90s, that network started to be used by investors and financial institutions as well. We responded by adding capabilities, particularly in payments and securities. Then in the new millennium, we found that client demand was shifting to all markets to all markets configurations. It was not just about developed market companies trying to expand into emerging markets. It was also about emerging markets champions and new digital companies starting anywhere and expanding globally. So we had to ensure that the network worked in every direction. And what we're experiencing now is that the network is becoming very relevant for a smaller and a smaller companies that are born or become global very quickly, including many new economy digital companies. So over the years, our network has become multi-directional, important to an even larger set of clients and more difficult for competitors to replicate. It's worth stepping back and looking at how this business model, a complete set of products and services offered through the broadest network in an integrated way, has translated into financial performance. This slide gives you a snapshot of our business using average numbers for the last five years 
and comparing the largest financial institutions in the industry. Let me highlight a few points. We are the second largest institution in revenue terms. We have a large and diversified deposit base arising from the strength of our services business, and in particular, our TTS franchise. Our business mix has delivered solid returns and a good competitive position through the cycle across very different macro environments. And very importantly, while we are in a solid position, it is clear to us that we have opportunities to improve that performance in absolute and relative terms across each one of our businesses. Let me add to that some more specific information about our businesses. In security services, we have already won a path to increase in share in investor business and to higher returns. And we are confident that we can continue along that path. In TTS, we achieve 20 plus percent returns and we think that we can grow the business materially while maintaining those returns. In banking, we have been gradually improving our business and expect to continue to build on that momentum. And in markets, we're continuing the improvements we have made in our equities franchise and are retaining leadership in fixed income while keeping a very close eye on returns and capital. We will give you more detail on these businesses, but for now, we want to show that we are in a strong and relevant position across all our franchises. One thing that we want to make clear is that we use position as a proxy for share and relevance, not as a target in and of itself. Really, what really matters is being relevant, to be able to deliver what our client needs and being profitable, not being mired in some sort of scale trap where the business cannot make appropriate returns. Today, we occupy a strong competitive position and produce solid returns across all of our businesses. And we think that we have an opportunity to do significantly better. Before discussing how we intend to do that, I would like now to present a short video from one of our valued clients, Blackstone, and show how we have worked with them over the last two decades globally to support their growth. When you're a firm that's trying to expand globally, that's often difficult. You start by flying into a market, looking for opportunities, but you need friends, you need trusted advisors. And the fact that City is on the ground in every major market around the world was instrumental for us in helping us build those relationships and grow our business. That sort of local storefront they have, that network, it's invaluable. It doesn't matter if you're in Europe, if you're in the Middle East, if you're in Asia, City's been there. Latin America, same story. And so they have this unbelievable network. It's something that a firm like ours really prizes and they provide access, they give us confidence, they provide capital markets expertise, all of that so valuable as we try to grow and expand around the world. Blackstone over the last two decades has moved from North America into Europe, Asia, Australia, and we have been an instrumental partner side by side with them and making sure that they see everything that we think they'll be interested in seeing in every one of those geographies. Blackstone has taken three public companies with our name on it to the markets and City was a lead underwriter on all three and that is not a coincidence. Both our firm and City certainly under Jane's leadership has really focused on the importance of diversity, decarbonization, being a force for good and I think that's another reason that our two firms do have this special connection. It makes us very proud to see what we're able to accomplish when we partner with our clients. And Blackstone is a fine example of how we create value for our clients. So grounded in an understanding of value proposition, competitive position, and financial returns of who the ICG is today, we want to focus on where we go from here. Improving those returns is our North Star, and it permeates everything that we do. But I want to highlight three strategic priorities that can contribute the most to drive our business forward. They're all interconnected and will reinforce our ability to serve our clients' needs. The first one is to accelerate our investment in services. This has to do with leveraging the network and making sure that the strength that we have today remains and improves as the world continues to evolve. Critically, we want to ensure that we capture the potential opportunity in full, which is something that we have not always done in the past. 
Our second strategic priority is to grow our commercial bank. This determination flows naturally from the discussion that we have been having. Our business fits very well with the demands of a growing number of mid-sized and emerging corporates. We have thoroughly tested this business in the last decade, and we have a coverage model and a risk approach that works. But as Tasneem will show, we're only scratching the surface of the opportunity. And third, our banking and markets franchises, we want to retain our strengths and keep positive momentum in the areas where we have room to improve. We believe we can do that while keeping a very strong capital discipline, particularly in markets. We will use the rest of our presentation to elaborate on those three strategic priorities. But we will begin with services. I will briefly touch on our securities services business, and then Shamir Khalik will give you a more detailed account of our TTS strategy. Our overall services strategy is to become a key operational partner for our clients as they conduct their business and help them grow and become more efficient in their business. In security services, we deal with financial institutions, investors, and issuers, and we provide them custody, fund administration, middle office, securities lending, and issuer services. In essence, all the key things that they need to administer their investments and issuing activities. This is a critical component of our services strategy and a very good story for us. Let me give you a sense of what we have been doing in this business and where we are headed. Our traditional strength in this business was direct custody and issue services as well. Direct custody is offered to mostly other banks and custodians and leverages our unique custody network in 63 countries, the largest in the market. But we lacked in the other side of the business, investors. So we restructured and rebuilt our investor business where we now offer custody through a global combined window in addition to fund administration and middle office services. This is now a very profitable business for us, which is growing and is well positioned for the future. Very importantly, we have made significant progress in building our developed markets capabilities, USA, Western Europe, Japan, Australia, and we now have a genuinely global, global offering. Our strengths have been recognized by some of the largest and most sophisticated investors who have been moving business to city. You see in this slide what that results in financially. Going forward, we will continue to execute our strategy. We will grow share one client at a time and leverage our strong overall relationship with asset managers and financial institutions to do so. We will also modernize our infrastructure to improve our data and analytic services, as well as our client experience so that the business continues to grow. Let's talk now about our other big services business, Treasury and Trade Solutions, or TTS. TTS is the critical backbone that our clients utilize to access our network, moving money around the globe, and it's a significant business with significant growth potential. Shamir Khalik will now join us to present on DTS, and then after a short break, Tasneem Jawadwala will talk about the investment we're making in our commercial bank. After that, I will return to cover our banking and markets businesses. Shamir, over to you. Thank you. <laughs> 